I didn't really know what is actually mental illnesses when I was growing up because it was always taught that like if you go to Woodbridge Hospital, you go to IMH, it means that you are just someone who is on the street talking to themselves. So when I tell people that I have mental disorders, they will always tell me, say, oh, you don't look like it, you look so like, okay what? Then I'm like, what do you think mental health sufferers looks like? Like, they just look like everybody, come on. I do appear confident, mostly, but not because I totally am confident, okay? That's like the misconception. People are like, oh, you look like so put together. You're cool, you're like, whatever that is. I hate it when people just like, they put me in a part whereby I'm so invincible. I'm not, like, I'm just a human being who is like, probably gonna break down at any time. <laughs> is Jess and I suffer from various mental disorders. My motive here is to shine some light in mental health awareness. As you may or may not know, I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, disassociative identity disorder, borderline personality disorder, anxiety, depression, mild bipolar and mild psychosis. I think currently my PTSD is the one that I struggle with the most. Because the PTSD is, is actually the one that caused me to have depression, to cause me to have other forms of like disorder. It kind of rooted all the way back to like how, when I was a kid. I guess I can remember things that are from 3 years old, 11 years old, 5 years old. It imprinted in my mind very, very badly. Sometimes I feel that I'm trapped there and I couldn't run out of it. My mental health issues were the worst when I'm around, like, I say 19 all the way to, like, 24. Year by year of accumulation of all the traumatic experience that I've had with my family, with my peers, with schools, with workplace. It was just one thing after another and then just piled up to like a whole chunk of like a load that I have to carry. So we are going through the first track, right? Yeah, what's the idea behind the song? Uh, the idea for the first track is about like the past, like a bad dream. Then I can't differentiate what is real and surreal. So then I tried many ways to do it, but then it's like it's not going anywhere. Last time I was really, really like depressed and stuff. So Dino kind of like encouraged me to write songs and stuff to sort of like divert my anger and fear and sadness to something else. Then give me courage to write songs. Like with my broken grammar. Yeah. I dated myself, but it boils down to loneliness. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, boys. Boy. Boil. Boil. Jess is actually she's not like a trained professional singer, but I I guess she 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 loves music, yeah, just like me. She she loved music from young, like from the start. So I guess that's her her inspiration to want to do music now. It's like an a, a creative outlet. For her. Bad dream. Bad dream. So bad dream is about the past. Like, like okay, I see my life as a dream. I don't think that like my existence in this world is like a real thing. It might be just a long dream that I cannot wake up from. Just another disappointment. I really feel that like back then life was pretty pointless and meaningless and um, I wouldn't mind just ending it kind of thing. Everything just so grim. It's just so, so grim and like you just couldn't get out of this black hole. Mm -hmm. 
Rockaboy, my baby, if it's only just a dream. I will battle with a lot of my suicidal thoughts. So my suicidal thoughts will talk to me like a friend. But suicidal is my toxic friend. It's like an imaginary someone. It just creeps in. Like, you're not good. You're not good. You're not good. That's where the blurred line of the um, surreal and real thing. Like, you sometimes you cannot tell. I hope it's just a bad, bad dream. Suffering from all these things, uh, it's like your mind is so tired and so busy and drained because your mind can't work like point A to point B. It has to go through like this whole part of maze uh, for you to dissect everything first to understand that this is actually what it is. Then you push through to it, then say that, like, oh, okay, don't get panicked because that's not real. Yeah, but it, it takes a lot. Please just Jess's condition has improved since more than one year ago, but uh, her depression, her PTSD, and her anxiety is still affecting her. Like sometimes during the day, she still feels like a wave of, of depression, anxiety. So it can be a few days, but then in the daytime, she has to go and work. So she has to sort of suppress or bury her feelings in order to um, do her work properly. I own Two Basic Studio, so it's like a creative agency where I help uh, brands to do their brand's content and also branding. Can you help me do like one shot, right, with three bottles together? Three bottles, just plain, uh, with pink up background, well, can? Also can. Can I? Yeah. For me, it's like, if the project is small, I will do everything myself. I will actually take charge of all the executing. I like to have like my freedom, my creative freedom to actually sit down and think what I can actually produce the best for the client. I don't see that like mental illnesses is something that makes a person long functional. That I have a very strong desire to get better because I always feel that my mental state is sort of like a blockage in whatever things that I want to do. When I feel depressed, right, I feel like uh, not motivated, and then I will be very sort of just self-deprecating kind of like mentality. It's like, oh, I can't do anything. I'm not good. I suck, and every, and all these feelings. It just like covers me and bury me inside. I just want to break through this whole blockage of mine, which I actually since last year, I sort of break through that a lot more. And then like right now, it's like I really can do a lot of things, and I don't have all these things that's holding me back. Joy helps me to sort of like take my mind off things and then like helps me to calm down and also like sort of like an escape. So I would draw whatever I want and then nobody really can like say that what I'm drawing is wrong. Because when it comes to art, it's like you can be expressive and stuff and it's something that like um, there's no judgement to it. I'm actually drawing a noose with like bubbles blowing out of the noose. So why is there a noose blowing up bubbles? Because like I always look at the noose, right? It looks like the, the thing that you pull from the bubble up. So I battle with a lot of suicidal thoughts and it sometimes makes me feel so pain inside to the point that I just hope, I just really hope that like um, I could just disappear from the face of the earth. And so-called like dying is kind of, kind of like a fantasizing way of like sort of a release of myself. So when you blow a bubble, it's like you are like blowing your soul away. Going to my family uh, in my childhood, looking back, it was pretty dysfunctional. The punishment wasn't very lenient. Sometimes I feel that I do even do anything wrong, and then like the punishment was just like mm, not good. 
I guess it kind of gave me stressors and caused more disorder. Like, I have a lot of things that, even today, I also have the anxiety when, like, there's a loud bang, or, like, when I was, like, at my friend's house, I would, like, scared that, like, you know, their parents would scold or whatever. Like, I oh, couldn't do this, couldn't do that. But actually, like, in their house, it's actually okay. So, it kind of, like, still have this, like, sort of PTSD fear in my back of my head. Yeah. I guess my family makes me feel that, like, I'm not good enough. Mentally, I feel that, like, whatever I do is wrong. I feel very, like, drained, mostly, because I feel that I always have to keep up to this standard. Um, it kind of makes me really feel like I'm just not love, where I wanted. Like, the loneliness is like, I guess it was like a like, big hole. Yeah. Ba, me. Hmm. When I first got diagnosed, uh, my parents think that it's like a taboo. So uh, they just feel that like I shouldn't talk about it. I shouldn't um, display it elsewhere or whatever that it is. I shouldn't even go to a doctor. I shouldn't even take my meds. Uh, I should just like deal with it. You know, don't think too much. I kind of think. Back then, I was pissed off that why didn't they support me and stuff. But now, when I look back, it's like, yeah, they can't because they don't know. And it's not their fault that they don't know. Because my parents come from a generation that don't use internet. I would say that the only reason why they sort of accept mental illnesses more was because the TV actually like sort of did some awareness about mental illnesses and then that's where my parents sort of chanced by and watched it. And then that's where they first realised that like what I'm going through wasn't a joke. <laughs> yeah, and then they realised that it was actually a real thing. So that's where they started to accept it more. Okay lah, not bad. Okay lah, not bad. Yeah. 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 I think after I moved out, things just like sort of get better. It's because they miss me also. Uh, so I guess like that's how things just slowly changed for the better. <laughs> 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 I love drawing a lot. When I was a kid, as I draw, I feel like very relaxed, very free, very like like I escape. So a few years back, I kind of like want to reconnect back to that part of me. So that's why I started drawing again. Tattooing is like sort of the best way to go because I can actually earn money out of it while doing the things that I love, and people are buying my art forever, permanently on their skin. So that kind of makes me feel happier. Okay, Jess, so how have you been lately? Great, I think. So far, so good. Mm. I don't really have any much breakdown anymore. Right? If, I use, if I have, I will call you. Right? That's true. So Sandra knew about my issues. I realised that like, the whole relationship was like a lot of times it's me telling her a lot of things. So then she's very patient to listen. Yeah, I see like, actually nowadays you're more significantly like better, like more stable, have lesser like outbreaks. It's been like two years already. Yeah. Actually, like, we think about like, how you've been since last, like the first time I know you. Uh, it's like a vast, uh, vast, like vast difference. <laughs> uh. Before I met Jess, no, I didn't have much of uh, knowledge about how severe mental illness could be. I always just thought that people were, you know, could be sad. It's just emotions, right? It's like, you're just sad for like a while and then you can get better. I didn't really think that it was a perpetual thing. 
So when I met her, I think it kind of educated me about the stigma of mental health and how important it is to destigmatize it. What a lot of people with mental illness, I feel that they lack something in their life that they are craving for. I think it's important to just be there for them. That would really help a lot in their um, journey to recover. Go in there. Sandra, you tilt a bit more to the front a bit. You also... Oh, you're closer. You're very yeah, closer. Yeah, yeah. I think that everybody has their own issues and it's not like they choose to have this mental illness. Jess's mental health journey has definitely contributed in a very positive way to her work because, I mean, she's an artist, right? Okay, look into the camera. One, two, three, did not remember to open your eyes, ah? Huh? For art, it's never like something that is like a plain and simple, by the book kind of thing. Every artist has their story that they want to tell. So this is definitely her story and she wants to help other people like in similar situations as well to tell them that you know you're not alone you will get through this you just need to like find your way and find the right people to be around very bit stressed I feel like tearing everything down, actually. I feel like I don't, don't want to do it. I felt so troubled. Okay, okay. I want to bring awareness to mental health issues because going through mental disorders, I feel very discriminated. It's just feel that the whole is judging you. Like workplace, like they just judge me. Then I have like family feel very judged by them. Friends that who doesn't know any better to feel that you are judged by them. Insurance also judge me in the sense that I can't get insurance. Also, discrimination comes from every angle. Oh, very bit stress. I feel like tearing everything down, actually. I feel like I don't, don't want to do it. I don't know, I just feel everything very pretentious. Then I feel very, like, 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 judgy and, like, it's like putting up a show, everything. You just don't feel like me. And then, like, I don't know, I just felt this whole very overwhelmed feeling. Because of I want to bring this awareness, right, then I have to actually put myself here to do this. It's like, yeah, I feel like crap also. I'm just like, oh, anxiety. It's like, oh my god, I'm so nervous and everything. I'm anxious, but then I have to do it because I think people need a voice to change uh, the mindset of people. So that is like so-called like, I have to actually put up with myself. Let's talk about discrimination. Many forms of discrimination can come like directly and indirectly. So where it comes with the direct discrimination was getting rejection from insurance with um, like from plans like hospitalization and as well as life insurance. I think that is very uncalled for. Because Personal hopes and dreams right now is to get insurance. <laughs> like I really hope that my work here can really create enough noise to sort of alter the law a bit to sort of no more discrimination from the insurance side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, what do you want? Give me a hug. <laughs> no scared, no scared. We met on a dating app and uh, after that we, we started hanging out as friends. So we actually became friends first. Like recently, we started seeing each other as like more than friends. Uh, yeah, it's been going slowly. So as of now, we're not really in a relationship, but we are like friends, but we're seeing each other. I open my heart to let it get crushed again. I would say that I wouldn't mind being in a relationship with him, but then I think that he, on his end, he's not ready. I think there's a lot of fear within him that like, I have mental issues. So like, yeah, I think he's scared that he's not up for it. I dated myself 
but it boils down to loneliness. So I sometimes I do feel that like I shouldn't even tell the person that I'm dating that I have issues. And then maybe I'll be accepted better. But then it's wrong to think that way also. So of course I try to be more honest. But I try to be more honest and be vulnerable. Sometimes you get rejected a lot. So of course that kind of makes me feel a bit like fear. I mean, you know, try his best in a lot of things. He try to take care of me, be caring and stuff. Mm, but I scared that it's a lot to us. This is so surreal. Please just wake me up. I'm not gonna lie. It can be tough. Like being in a relationship with someone with um, depression, anxiety, or mental disorders like in general. So it's a lot for me to do. I have to watch what I say, I have to do the right things, like I have to be extra careful and mindful not to trigger any of her traumas and, and uh, anxieties and all that. So sometimes it can get very draining because I'm not a therapist. I'm just a human. I hope it's just a bad, bad dream. In certain sense, I feel like I'm less of a human being. I feel like I feel upset, of course. I don't think I'm rejected first time because of this. So I feel that like generally, I'm not good enough for anybody. Sometimes I feel that it's being alone is better. To be discharged means that you don't need to go back for follow-up. It just doesn't mean that you are like fully recovered or anything. It's just like you discharge from the hospital, that's all. When my psychiatrist wanted to discharge me, I was happy but a bit worried. I'm very scared that like, I, get, I will relapse again and then I can't need help. I don't want to have an emergency and panic again. But I feel very relieved that I'm like, much better now. I guess I can let go of a lot of things that I used to hold on with a lot of grudge. Yeah, so it's like a lot of things I let go. And I guess I feel lighter. Whatever I've been through with the mental health journey actually got me to be a stronger person. So I don't think I'll be fully recovered, but I feel that like that itself actually made me a stronger person. And I think that that should be something that we should celebrate instead of discriminating that you can never be better, you will always be sick, you will always relapse. You know, we should celebrate the fact that we have come so far and we have reached a point of stage where we can be contented with ourselves. Sometimes when people tell me to say I inspired them to give them like a hope or certain things to even help them speak up, I feel very happy that like I can be an inspiration for someone else to help someone in their journey in recovery. Bye.